So I was talking recently with some priests from around the country, uh, as you do nowadays, I guess, uh, uh, who were all kind of sharing different ideas of uh, ministry that they've been doing and, and different uh, uh, ways that we've been doing it with technology. And uh, we've been ta- we were talking about how ministry has changed so much during the last nine, ten months or whatever it's been now uh, during the pandemic. And sure, you know, there are a lot of uh, varied and complicated technological approaches that so many of us have pieced together. I think no two are the same. Uh, I think about our current setup with our multiple cameras, our multiple microphones. We've got 50 foot USB extension wires running all over the place, uh, all the way to the back to where Sharon and Harry sit and all other different innovations that we've had to employ just so that we can make Sunday morning happen. But as I spoke with folks about all of the advances our churches have made in the tech department, I noticed something. And what I noticed was our conversations just kept going back to people. That is to say, the people who make up our congregations. One priest in particular said something that, actually, that really struck me. He said, don't worry about producing Sunday morning. Sunday morning will happen. Well, as we found out this Sunday morning, sometimes Sunday morning starts to happen without you. But we did get online, and now here we are. But he said there's a question that you need to ask your people rather than worry so much about how you make Sunday morning happen. And that question is, tell me about the last time you felt your church was successful. That is to say, tell me about the most recent time that you felt God was present in your lives and was leading the church into something extraordinary. And you said that the answer to this question can tell us a lot about where people are at right now. And I think that's really true. You know, so often I think we judge the success of our churches and therefore how present God is by our numbers. We look back to the past when we remember our pews being full. We think of noisy Sunday school rooms when we had an abundance of children. We think of big events and times of financial stability. However, for some reason, the time that we spend in transition, that is to say the time that our communities spend in the wilderness usually don't come to mind. And yet, if we look to the scriptures, it's during times of exile, that is to say, times of transition, where we always see God showing up. It's in the wilderness that we see God showing up. And I think... I think that perhaps God shows up in the wilderness so often because that is exactly where he is needed the most. You know, if we look at our gospel lesson today, we hear the story of a strange individual appearing in the wilderness who was the herald of good news. However, this isn't really what was expected. The good news was supposed to come out of Jerusalem. People thought the good news would spring forth from the temple. People thought that respected and well-dressed priests would be the ones letting them know that the time had come, that salvation was at hand. And yet that wasn't the case. Instead, God chose the wilderness. 
Instead, we find John the Baptist in the wilderness baptizing folks at the Jordan River for the forgiveness of sins. A, a strange kind of purification ritual of sorts that we've now adopted today. Interestingly, there were already ceremonies called mikvah baths and purification rituals that uh, happened right outside of the temple. But again, this wasn't where God decided to show up. Instead, God was with a strangely dressed individual who ate locusts and wild honey. That is where God was present and preparing to move in a way that no one could see coming. And you know, as I consider all of this, I can't help but think that this is very similar to where St. Clement's is at right now. You see, you are about to enter a wilderness period. And you may be tempted to look back and think, oh, well, those were the days. Those were the days when God was present in our church and we were moving. And while, yes, I, I do believe that God has been present throughout the history of this little church on the corner, I think it would be a mistake to dwell too long in our memories of years past. Because right now, right now is actually an exciting time where God is about to lead this church into the wilderness Right now is the time where God is beginning the process of preparing this church for what's to come. And right now is the time when God is going to be the most present. Because God always shows up in the wilderness. And this, this preparing the way that John the Baptist is crying out for us to do. This getting ready for God to move in new ways, this is also what the season of Advent is all about. You know, during Advent, we're right to put a focus on getting ready, to do an inventory of sorts and prepare for all that God is going to do. So I think it's no mistake that St. Clement's is about to walk into that in the middle of Advent. And you know, the, the best thing about Advent is that there's more. Because we're, we're called to look at how we live our lives, to, to take a look at what we are doing in our personal preparation. We're to ask ourselves, how are we participating in the saving and life-giving work of Jesus Christ? How are we joining in with God's mission to reach out to the hurting world? And how does the community here come together to do those things? Again, this is actually an exciting time for St. Clements. And as you prepare, as you journey into the wilderness, you're going to have the opportunity to, to work through some important questions together. You'll have the opportunity to ask, who are we as a church? What is the mission that God has for this little church on the corner? I'd like to encourage you to dream big dreams. To dream big dreams of how God will move here at St. Clement's. Because God is ever so close right now. And God has dreams for this place. And it's time time for you to come together, to come together in prayer and in worship, 
to meet God in the wilderness as a community and prepare for all of the amazing things to come. Amen.